Hello Cormatronge, uh, my name is Phil Tro, and I am the writer and director of Upstairs. Um, Upstairs would initially seem to be about the Saint family dealing with their grief following the loss of the family's patriarch Derek, on top of which they also have to struggle with the youngest member of the family, Jennifer's insistence that her older twin siblings, Caroline and James, were actually responsible not just for Derek's death but for many others including her boyfriend Simon. Uh, now these accusations are dismissed as delusions and uh, Jennifer is treated as a, a troubled young lady and it would certainly appear that she's the only one who can see Derek's urn moving on the mantelpiece as if he's reaching out from the other side with a message uh, and is certainly the only one that, can, uh, that seems to witness Caroline and James supposedly struggling to maintain their human form. So it's not hard to believe that the paranoia could all be in Jennifer's head. Uh, the film itself takes place over one night uh, and one awkward dinner party uh, where the saints are desperately trying to function as a normal family by welcoming Caroline's new boyfriend Tim into the home. Um, but as Jennifer tries to uh, tell their guest her version of the truth and what happened to her dad, uh, it transpires that Tim's not just there to meet his potential new family-in-law, uh, but also in a professional capacity uh, to try and help and uh, you know, maybe even diagnose Jennifer's condition. Um, however, as the evening unravels and Jennifer fights to cling on to some semblance of reality, it transpires that maybe her accusations aren't the result of a troubled mind and are in fact the dark truth. Caroline and James aren't human. Uh, they weren't born, they were hatched, uh, as she says. Uh, and every few months, in order to survive, the Saint family have to participate in a ritual where a dinner guest is lured upstairs so the twins can feed. Uh, this is a bit of a plot spoiler, um, but ultimately, I guess the, the true horror in many ways uh, is revealed to be uh, Jennifer's prison, where Mum Shirley keeps her sedated in order to keep her safe from the twins, but which ultimately means that there's no escape for Jennifer, and uh, she's trapped to relive this nightmare over and over again. We filmed upstairs uh, over two days back in February 2020, after we were able to bring together quite an impressive um, cast and crew. Uh, I work as a, as a script supervisor over here in the UK and have done for the last 15 years or so. And my DOP, Patrick King, uh, works as a DIT. So between us, um, we were able to basically ask friends who are already working in the industry as production designers, costume designers, makeup designers, camera crew, AD, sound recordists. You know, they all have um, a really impressive uh, list of credentials. Um, and it was kind of the same thing with the cast as well. Uh, I worked with Sorica uh, back in 2017-18 on a Netflix show called The Innocents. And she, uh, and she jumped at the chance to play Jennifer. Um, and at the time, I was already working on a, on a BBC One show called Roadkill uh, with Yolanda, who played Caroline, and uh, Mr. DeCastica, um, who I already knew anyway, because I worked on, I think it was his first uh, TV project back in 2010, uh, which was also Jack Thorne's um, first TV project called The Fades. Uh, for BBC Three. So I already knew those guys, and we, like I said, was working with Ian Yolanda. So they all they all kind of agreed. Um, Luke I hadn't met before, but I was fully aware of um, from the fantastic BBC Three show In the Flesh, uh, which is kind of like a, a post-zombie apocalypse uh, drama, which I highly recommend if you can uh, get hold of. Um, so that just left Shirley and Heather Came highly recommended by someone uh, and after I spoke to her on the phone and saw her I mean physically she looks you know like she could be everyone's mum basically and um, and I thought she was just absolutely perfect um, so yeah so so we were kind of really lucky with that and then it was a case of, of trying to find a location and obviously we didn't have the budget to build the house um, in a studio uh, so I think it was Facebook I put a poster on Facebook and surprisingly got quite a few replies 
uh, one of which was from the from the Davis family um, in a place in North London called Stroud Green. And I think it was the third or the fourth house I went to see. And as soon as I walked in, I mean, it was just amazing. There was there was like a huge grandfather clock in the hallway and stuffed otter heads above, uh, mounted on the wall. They had the, the original Victorian black and white tiles throughout the, the hallway into the kitchen. They had old photos of their ancestors, kind of really, this really kind of disturbing image of a, a of a grandfather with a young baby on his lap looking not particularly that impressed by the whole thing but I walked in and just thought yeah this is uh this is where the saints live it was um it was astonishing and sadly we just didn't have time to kind of you know pick these things off um when we were shooting but during lockdown one over here in the UK I kind of wrote the feature script um for upstairs and all of these things kind of feature really heavily just because they were so absolutely uh, perfect in uh, representing exactly where, where the saints live. Something I didn't realise at the time of filming, um, and I think I was told by uh, Lizzie, our standby art director afterwards, uh, the guy who owned the house that we filmed in, uh, Russell, uh, well, I say filmed, we were there, I think we were there for five days, because it was a day of dressing, a day of lighting, two days of filming, and a day of D-Rig. Um, but Russell is actually a, uh, a well-known, well-respected broadcaster and presenter over here in the UK, and in fact presents uh, BBC Radio 4's longest-running quiz show, The Brain of Britain. Um, so not only is Russell an incredibly um, generous and accommodating man who gave us the perfect location uh, in which to uh, give the saints uh, a home, He's also a celebrity, basically, um, which kind of makes you wonder why he didn't know um, bringing a film crew into your home isn't maybe not the greatest idea in the world. But however, he did, and we are incredibly uh, grateful for that. Um, obviously, I've already spoken a lot about the house, but in, in regards of influences, I think, you know, Films uh, like Ari Aster's Hereditary um, and Kubrick, I guess, as well, in regards to The Shining, and obviously that's a hotel. But um, the way they both used uh, location, such an amazing uh, effect. I mean, Ari Aster as well, obviously, with all the uh, the model building as well. Um, I think that really uh, played a big part in my mind when I was uh, creating Upstairs. Um, I think I'm, I'm also uh, I'm also really influenced by, and it's probably not quite as evident uh, in the film, but I love kind of in camera kind of body horror effects, uh, you know, the thing, uh, Evil Dead, um, and like I say, although they weren't evident in Upstairs, I think in my head in in regards to um, the transformation that, that Caroline and James would go through whilst they're upstairs, uh, you know, shedding their human form and revealing whatever they might be. I think certainly, um, you know, the thing uh, was definitely, uh, was definitely, oh, an American werewolf, of course, um, was very much in my mind. Um, I think other influences, I mean, one of my favourite films of all time is The Wicker Man. Uh, and although I'd, I'm not sure it was intentional, but when I think about it, I think Tim um, is kind of very uh, similar to Sergeant Howie in regards of being the uh, oblivious um, victim that's lured into a situation which he has no idea or control. Despite the fact they both think they're in control and they both know what they're doing, they both really don't. And uh, of course, they, they both meet um, a rather sticky end. Uh, in regards to upcoming projects, there's a few things on the go at the moment. Um, there's Hoax, which is a found footage uh, idea, which I know is a device that does divide the horror uh, audience, but hopefully it's a fresh and uh, original enough idea. But basically it's about a YouTuber who goes around to uh, supposed haunted locations and uh, 
recreate with you know uh, trickery and and and, uh, and, and lighting the uh, supposed evidence that's been captured before. However, on one particular uh, investigation, he stumbled across something he can't quite explain, which has uh, deadly consequences. Uh, there's Silas, uh, which is about two people who have to go to rather desperate measures in order to stop the curse of old Silas in a um, remote English village. Uh, and there's The Guests, uh, which is a comedy horror that I'm um, co-writing and directing, which is about a brother and sister um, who are the children of a serial killer who uh, just happened by mistake, obviously, to uh, kill the son of the head of a crime syndicate. And now the brother and sister are being forced to be contract killers for the mob until the, the debt is repaid. Uh, and of course, there's the uh, there's the upstairs feature, which um, is written and ready to go. I just need someone to give me, I don't know, five or seven million uh, pounds to make it. Um, so yeah, I'd just like to say thank you very much for um, selecting upstairs to be part of uh, 2021's Call Matrange. Um, it's always a, it's always an honour uh, to have the film selected by a festival, um, and I hope you, uh, if you're watching, I hope you enjoy it. And um, yeah, uh, hopefully I will um, see you at some point in the near future. Cheers, all the best.